everyone. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to read some more Am I the Arsehole posts. So the first one is Am I the Arsehole for telling my son's girlfriend to break up with him? My female 41 son, male 20, has been in a relationship with his girlfriend, Lily, female 20, for about three years now. I love my son and I hate to say this, but he's not turned out to be a good person. He has very little work ethic, has no desire to get a job or go to college, and spends most of his time gaming or partying. Lily, on the other hand, is the polar opposite. She's very studious, has aspirations to be a doctor, is a very good swimmer, and is currently away at college. When my son and Lily first got together in high school, they were an excellent match. We loved having Lily over, and my son definitely took more care of himself. Since then, it's rapidly deteriorated. I know my son still loves Lily, but he never gives her the attention she deserves, and with her clear potential, I just feel she deserves better. When Lily came to visit a few days ago, she was visibly upset. When my son went to the store, I asked her if she was okay, and she told me that she didn't know what to do, and wondered why my son had such little ambition and was so lazy. I told her I didn't see it changing any time soon, as that's my view given it's been ongoing for almost two years. When she asked what I would do in her situation, I told her to put herself first and what she wanted. Lily thanked me and said she'd think about things. Well, earlier today, my son comes downstairs in a rage, telling me that Lily had broken up with him via text. I asked him what she said, and apparently the message referred to discussions with your mum that had made her rethink the relationship. My son was livid that I'd gotten involved and said I'd overstepped boundaries. I told him that I didn't advise Lily to leave him, just said she had to make her own choices and decide what was best for her. My son is now not talking to me and my husband is annoyed, believing that having no Lily will make my son's rut last even longer. I also miss having Lily around, so am I the arsehole? No, I don't think she is. She didn't necessarily interfere in the relationship. Lily asked her for advice and she gave it. And I think this is better than a mum being overly invested in her son's relationship. And it's also not Lily's responsibility to get their son out of the rut, as the dad says. Like, he needs to do that himself, not rely on someone else. But yeah, I don't think she's the arsehole. So the next one is, am I the arsehole for telling my super rich friend she's unbearable to hang out with? I mean, it's really self-explanatory, but I'll give some details. My bestie since childhood, let's call her Jenny, has her finances secured. She, 35 years old, built and made an exit from a business, making her insanely rich. She comes from a very humble background, and I can confidently say that she's earned it by working for it. I come from a pretty average background and have a pretty average job today, so does most of our friends. I don't miss anything, and I do have savings, can go on trips, etc. Her story is a fairy tale and we are all super proud of her, but a couple of years ago she was approached by an agency that pushed her to become a public motivational speaker and podcaster. Since then she has become increasingly unbearable to be around and I eventually came to the point where I needed to tell her. Since Jenny got rich, she's always been herself, just in a more fancy package and I have loved that for her. You go girl. She's always been super respectful about other people's finances and when we meet up she's always up for whatever the rest of us can afford. Even on her bachelorette party, she made a deal about making sure to do things everyone could afford. When pursuing her journey as a motivational speaker and podcaster, I had to revisit everything I thought about her. All of her motivational tips were related to not wanting to be an average person, and that everyone can become just as rich as her if they weren't lazy. In one episode, she talks about making sure to surround oneself with successful people to avoid looking at average people as an acceptable norm. She even went as far as describing another friend's husband as her nightmare partner, as he lacks ambition. She didn't mention him by name, but other details that made us able to identify him. Over time, this worsened, and eventually other friends stopped inviting her to things. Now the podcast took another turn, and she started to talk about how to handle when people turn your back at you for becoming successful, and how lonely it is at the top. I decided it was time to tell her I think she's losing grip of reality, and if she continues with being so judgmental in her podcast, she will end up just as lonely as she described herself to be. Jenny got super pissed at me and told me she wouldn't expect this from her best friend, and claims I've been jealous and felt inferior to her my whole life, which is absolutely not true. She tells me the whole podcast thing is her playing a part, and that she exaggerates her opinions for reach. She thinks I am the one who has convinced all the others to leave her side, and wants me to apologise before ever speaking to me again. Help me here, am I the arsehole?
should I apologise? Again, I don't think she's the asshole. This Jenny sounds insufferable and I wouldn't want to be her friend either. And if um, she's saying that her podcast is like a persona and she doesn't really believe those things, why didn't she ask permission to tell the stories like about the friend's husband before she did it? Because regardless of whether you're a persona or not, you're still saying those things and they're still hurtful to your friends. I wouldn't apologise, I'd just cut her off, but that's just me. <laughs> the next post is, am I the asshole for telling my sister that her life is my biggest nightmare? I, 27 female, have an older sister, Cara, 45 female. We have a big age gap, but still quite close and she's basically like another parent for me. And we got much closer when our mum died when I was 14. Kara basically raised me and is very overprotective, but in the past I have asked her to give me some space. I have always been career focused and dated casually and nothing long term. Most of my friends are married and some with kids, we are all at different life stages. My one and only serious relationship beyond two months was with my ex-fiance, Ted, however we broke up last year. I struggled to move on and only started recently casually dating, but I miss Ted so I can't commit to anything. Kara helped me through the breakup, but she wanted me to get back together with Ted, as she really liked him and even suggested that I pass up the job for him. Kara really wants me to settle down like she has, and I just think we are too different in that. She is a stay-at-home mum to three kids, and basically raising a fourth as her husband doesn't lift a finger around the house, and will kick up a fuss if the house is messy or there's no food on the table. I don't like my brother-in-law at all, and I've encouraged Kara to discuss with him about getting him to help out around the house. Kara called me again last night to encourage me about starting to date again and then she set up a blind date for me and honestly I feel that's the only thing we've spoken about for the past few weeks. She said she just wanted me to be happy like she is but I then told her that her life is my biggest nightmare. She got upset and said I was being too harsh. Yeah, I do think she's the asshole in this situation. I understand that she doesn't want her sister um, to be involved and that's fine but you just need to tell her that. Just say, I don't want you to be involved in this part of my life, like, leave me alone. You don't need to attack her life for it. So yeah, I do think she was the asshole in this situation. The next one is, am I the asshole for not enjoying my boyfriend's surprise to me while sick? Trigger warning, stalkerish behaviour. The past couple weeks I've been extremely sick and haven't felt like leaving the house or doing anything. This sucks for me because nobody likes to be sick, but I'm a busybody and being bedridden is awful. I also haven't seen my female 19 boyfriend, male 20, in a while, and he keeps asking me when I will see him, and I tell him I want to wait until I'm at least not running fevers, because I wouldn't want to pass anything to him, especially because he has little siblings and a baby sister, and I would feel awful if I got them sick. He's very persistent, though, and keeps saying how much he misses me, and he wants to see me. He texts me multiple times a day, asking to come over, and I keep telling him not yet, especially because my fevers are up in the 104 range. Yesterday, both my parents were at work, so it was just me at home. I've been in and out of sleep because I've been sick, so I was asleep most of the day yesterday. Mind you, my boyfriend works Monday to Friday, so in no way did I expect this. Around 2pm, I'm woken up to someone rubbing my back. Before opening my eyes, I think it's my father home on his lunch. Nope, it's my boyfriend. I'm very shocked at first and asked him what he's doing here. He says he couldn't stand being apart and wanted to surprise me. I then asked how he got in because my parents always lock the door before leaving and he says he guessed the garage combination because it's the same digits as my phone password, which is what my family use as a common password. I'm a bit taken aback and I tell him it wasn't cool to show up uninvited. He told me it seemed like I was ignoring him and he wanted to come see what's up. We went back and forth about it for a while, me keeping my point of it's rude to show up uninvited and he just tells me I should be grateful to see him and I need to stop whining. After a while, he left, mostly because I made a point to say my parents don't know you're here and wouldn't be happy with me for having you over here without their permission. Since yesterday, he's not talked to me. Am I the asshole? I would say no. It seems to me like he didn't believe that she was sick and he was coming over to make sure that she was and that she wasn't just ignoring him. And to me, that's weird. Like, just give her space even if she was ignoring you. Like, it's weird to turn up at her house, break in essentially, just because you know the password doesn't mean that you didn't break in. That is weird. The next post is, would I be the asshole if I didn't let my daughter, 15 female, go to Orlando even though she paid for it? My daughter Ella is 15. When she started high school last year, we were told the band would be going on this field trip to Orlando. Of course, the trip was expensive. Since Ella is growing up, my husband and I decided that if she wanted to go, she would have to pay half of the cost. Ella agreed and she started spending weekends or teacher work days.
days on holidays, babysitting her siblings, five male, nine female, for $22 an hour. Either my husband or I would stay home and make sure everything was alright, and if there were times that both of us had to be out of the house, we'd make sure to ask our neighbours to keep an eye out and pay Ella $25 an hour. We were never gone for more than two hours. With babysitting, some family members graciously providing her with money to help her out, cleaning and some money she had already saved, and I was able to make a good amount of money, which we were so proud of her for, and made sure to voice this to her. Ella was able to make enough money quickly, so we were planning to sign her up for the trip. But earlier this week, I was informed that Ella had been mistreating a girl in her grade for having a mental illness, writing awful notes and putting them in the girl's bag, spreading disgusting and derogatory rumours, posting things about her online. It's a whole mess, and when I was called in, I could barely even listen the moment after I was told my daughter was bullying someone. I thought I had raised her right, told her to treat everyone with respect and kindness. I've never seen any sort of signs or behaviour that would ever indicate that Ella even thought badly about others, and now after 15 years, I'm told she fat shamed a little 14 year old girl. Her excuse being that someone with an illness shouldn't be allowed to get a higher test score than her. Ella was given a suspension, but it's very short. The school's motto is that they don't tolerate bullying at all, yet it feels as if she was only given a slap on the wrist and told not to do it again. It also feels wrong that I'm thinking this way, but I do think that there should be more done. The girl Ella had been bullying is also in the band, and I'm pretty sure she will be going to Orlando. Would it be wrong if I didn't allow Ella to go on the trip? She paid for half of the trip, but I don't think she deserves to go. I can't think of any other way to punish her. She loves to read and isn't on her phone often. She has a good amount of friends, but doesn't hang out with them often. What am I supposed to do? Take away her books and make her hang out with her friends more? Yeah, I think the trip is a good lesson, but my husband and a good friend of mine don't agree with the decision. The reasoning being that Ella worked for that money. I understand what they mean, which is why of course I'll let Ella keep what she earned, just not let her go on that trip. I don't want that girl to have any possibility of being bullied again. Would I be the asshole? No, I don't think she would. Obviously, Ella's going to be pissed that she can't go on the trip, but that's the consequences of your actions. Yeah, she saved the money, and that would mean that she goes on the field trip. But now that she's bullying someone else who might be on that trip, it's reasonable to lose that field trip. Just because you've done something positive to get that doesn't mean that you can't suffer the consequences of some other actions that you've done. So yeah, I don't think that the mum would be the arsehole. The next post is, am I the arsehole for telling my friend she's ruining her child's life with the name she gave her? So I, 21 female, have been friends with Laureen, 22 female, for 17 years now, and we're really close. She recently gave birth to her daughter, and her and her husband recently told us the name. They decided to name their daughter Juliet, pronounced Juliet, and her middle name is Mariah. I thought the spelling was a joke until she told me they are serious. I told her that with that spelling of a simple but beautiful name, it's just going to ruin that little girl's life. She got mad and told me to stop ruining her mood and that I'm being mean. I'm completely honest. The spelling is just bad. Nothing else can explain it. Why ruin such a beautiful name by including letters that don't belong there? I texted her yesterday and told her that the little girl will try to change her name, or at least go by her middle name since it's normal. She told me to stop texting her that I'm a bad friend and that I'm being the asshole for making fun of the name. I don't think I am. When I told her that the spelling is just bad, she went crazy. She told me that I'm the worst friend ever and that I would never be able to see her daughter again. After that, her husband sent me an email telling me to stop being so disrespectful. He thinks the spelling is cute and it just makes her unique. Unique, yes, but that's just going to make that little girl suffer and she'll probably be bullied for that spelling. I haven't replied and honestly, I don't think I'm the asshole here. But I thought I'd ask Reddit since you're all the best to judge. So I'm on the arsehole for telling my friend that the name she gave her daughter is bad and will ruin her life. Update. I've been asked if there are any updates and yes there are. So I've been talking with Laureen a lot over text and she's slowly starting to notice her mistake. I apologised again and we are good again. We talked about the name and she told me that she won't change it and really loves it but is slowly understanding why it's weird for others, especially me. Her husband on the other hand is still pretty mad at me. He thinks I took it too far and that my apologies aren't from the heart. I've been asked if I'm still the godmother, and yes I am. There were thoughts of changing it, but now that we get along again, I'm back in the role. I don't necessarily think she's an arsehole, but I would maybe. Like, if that was me, I would never tell a friend that I thought their kid's name was stupid, even if I did. And I do agree. 
agree that the spelling is obviously stupid and I don't really know why they've done that if they why don't they just call her Juliet <laughs> but if that's what they want to name them who am I to change that but I can see where um, the poster is coming from that obviously why wouldn't you just call her Juliet spelt normally because she's gonna have to spell her name out every single time or it's gonna be misspelled and that's just gonna be annoying for her I assume I don't know so I can see both sides of this really but I wouldn't say she's the arsehole the next one is am I the arsehole for telling my brother's girlfriend to f off my wife and I 39 lost our teenage son earlier this year it's been heart-wrenching my wife actually got fired from her job she fell into a deep depression as can be imagined my brother has a girlfriend, 22. She dabbles in the spiritual world and into all that kind of stuff. Three nights ago, we had them over for dinner for my youngest birthday party. In front of my depressed wife and my two young children, 8 and 11, she says, I can feel your son here. I say, excuse me. She tells my wife that she can feel his presence there and that she just knows she can help us make contact and help us with closure. My youngest is confused, starts crying. My wife's on the verge of tears. My brother's staring at her in awe like it's this great thing. I told her she needed to stop or that she could leave. She got upset and said that she was trying to help us with closure and that I don't understand. I told her to F off and leave. My brother got angry at me and we got in a big argument. They left. My wife is upset but thinks maybe I should have listened to her. She's desperate. My brother is texting me about how disrespectful I was to his girlfriend and that I needed to apologise. That's not just something you say to grieving parents. Am I the arsehole? No. I understand that she thought she was coming from a good place, but there's a time and place, and that's not it. If you don't have the relationship with these people, where you know you can say these things, then don't say it at all. Regardless of whether anyone believes that she can actually speak to the son, give it time. Like, earlier in the year, we're only in March, like, that's not very long. And yeah, like, you could argue that he maybe could have been nicer, but he lost his son. And he thought that she was being disrespectful, I don't think. You can judge a parent of how they react in that situation. The next post is, am I the asshole for getting genuinely angry following the cruel prank my friends pulled on me? I'm totally ready to be made fun of for this, but I strongly believe in the paranormal. And one thing in particular that freaks me out to my core is mimicry. A spirit or an entity taking on human traits or the appearance of a loved one to mess with you or lure you in. That kind of shit gives me nightmares and it's something my friends are very aware of given how much I yap about it. Last week I was staying over at a friend's place along with a few more people. We'd been hanging out together that evening and were too drunk to safely go home so we slept there. In the middle of the night something woke me up and while I was still dazed and confused I noticed one of my friends standing in the corner of the guest room. He was staring at me with a neutral demeanour, standing unnaturally still, and started whispering complete nonsense at me. Jumbled words, forming meaningless sentences, genuinely very creepy and eerie shit. I could hardly breathe and was just frozen. I couldn't believe what was happening. I was still under the effects of alcohol and had literally just woken up, and this felt like a surreal nightmare. After a bit, he started walking in a very robotic way to the bedroom door, never taking his eyes off me and left the room. That kind of made me snap out of my frozen state and I started considering it was a prank. I got up and rushed out only to see him sleeping on the couch. However, there were two girls awake in the kitchen chatting quietly that would have definitely seen him get up. But when I asked, they said they didn't. I started 
fascination for them, as well as respect and fear for the things they speak of. If you find it dumb, so be it, but it's how I was raised and part of my culture. Yeah, I don't think they're the arsehole. While it could be argued that they did overreact and it was just a prank, it doesn't really matter when the person being pranked doesn't feel that way. Obviously, we don't really know the extent of how much they actually fear, like the paranormal and stuff, so we can't really make a judgement on it. But if they were genuinely scared and angry, then I think it's fine. Like, it was a bit of an arsehole thing to do, but I guess sometimes people do just go too far, I don't know. But also pranks are usually meant to be funny for the person as well, when, like, it's revealed to them. So I don't know. I don't really think I'd class that as a prank. The last post I have is, am I the arsehole for telling our friend she isn't better just because she didn't get an epidural? My 28 female friend, Sarah, 27 female, recently gave birth to her first child one month. I assume that means one month ago. She's the youngest in our friend group and is also the last one to have a child. We were all, of course, very excited to meet both her child, but to support her during postpartum and her journey in motherhood. So we finally got to see her this Friday and everything was going very well. We all enjoyed meeting the group as a whole. Our mother had seemed to be finding her well, but then another friend of ours asked about her birth experience. Sarah told us about it and mentioned that she did not have an epidural. I was a little annoyed as some mums seemed to think going through unnecessary pain is something to brag about. I did not think that Sarah was like this, so I said as a joke, cool, did they give you a medal or should we do that? She asked me what that comment was necessary for and I told her that she knew all of us chose the epidural and shaming us for it is not a good look and that not having an epidural isn't something to brag about. She told me that it was not her intention to do so but our friends agreed with me and told her that I was right. If her point wasn't to bring us down or to brag she could have just avoided to mention it. She just said that she was sorry if she upset us but that she really did not mean it in that way. It became sour so we all decided to leave. I thought she would text us later and apologise, but instead her husband sent us a text from her number. He basically told us that Sarah was incredible during birth and would have been with or without an epidural and that we were the ones shaming her for not having one. We did not respond, but instead created another group chat talking about it. What we all agreed on is that she, like many other mums who don't choose the epidural, didn't intentionally try to shame us, but that they very often think of themselves as superior and it was sad that Sarah, who's otherwise a very kind-hearted person, turned out to be this way. We don't believe we are arseholes, but Sarah has not talked with us since and my husband told me that if I thought it was worth ruining a 15-year friendship over, then so be it. I would like to know if we are the arseholes here or if Sarah is. Obviously, they are the arseholes. I understand that people probably shame mothers for either having epidurals or not having them, but if what she said, what the poster has posted is correct, that Sarah just mentioned that she didn't have one, how is that shaming the rest of the group for having one? She was just telling her birthing story and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having an epidural, there's nothing wrong with not having one. I think the group just got insecure and felt attacked and then have taken that out on Sarah, but that's not her fault. And I can't believe that they're like 28 years old and they're literally admitting that they created a new group chat just to bitch about this situation. That's so juvenile. I can't believe that she doesn't think she's the arsehole. That was all of the posts that I have for today. 